Hey guys, it's Hogan here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use the Themify Ultra theme. So we're gonna walk through all the basic settings and features, as well as how to use the drag and drop builder to create a website. So this is perfect if you've recently just installed the Themify Ultra theme and you wanna learn how to use it, but it's also great for people who have recently installed WordPress and you're sort of searching for a new theme to create your website on. This theme is very versatile and flexible. There are a ton of header and footer layouts and you can customize any section of your website. You can change the colors as well. And it's very, very customizable, so you don't have to switch from theme to theme. And I've been using it for the last seven years now, and I've actually preferred over Elementor's Builder because I find it easier to use, but you can actually try it out and see which one you prefer. So if you have any questions, you can drop it in the comment section down below. To get started with this video, you can download the theme in the description. And I've actually partnered up with Themify to share the theme with you guys for free so you can use it for your personal or your commercial projects as well. So without much further ado, let's jump in the computer and begin. So once you've downloaded the theme, it should look something like this, themify-ultra.zip. In some cases, uh, if you're using Safari or Mac, it might automatically unzip into a folder. In that case, you need to click it, uh, right click it, sorry, and compress it back into the .zip format. So you can go back over here to your WordPress dashboard area, and you can hover over appearance and click on themes to upload your theme. Now, in some cases, if you do want to start fresh, you want a fresh installation of WordPress because you built your website with another theme and maybe you've uh, made some mistakes and your WordPress isn't working properly, you have a ton of plugins. If you wanna perform a WordPress reset, which takes you back to the default settings, you can install a plugin. So hover over here and click on add new. So basically with this plugin, it's also gonna delete like your content with your post and pages as well. Um, so we're gonna type in WP reset. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you save your content on like a Word doc or Google document so you can create that later. So it's this one by Web Factory. Click on install now and then click on activate. So once that is activated, uh, we can click on dismiss over here. You can click on open WP reset tools or you can hover over tools and then click on WP reset. So WP reset, they do have a pro version which allows you to customize what you delete and things like that. But we're gonna be using the free version. I just wanna show you the basic idea of it. So we're gonna scroll down over here to site reset, click on here uh, to deselect the reactivation of the plugin because we don't really need that um, unless you do wanna do that. So over here, we can type in reset. You can also create a snapshot. Basically, it's gonna take a snapshot and then you can actually revert back if you need to. Um, but I'm just gonna reset the site like this, okay? And click on reset. And this is gonna take us back to the default sort of WordPress settings. And it's gonna delete the pages and post content as well. So here we have a fresh installation of WordPress. Now we can hover over appearance, click on themes. So over here, we have the default theme installed. We can click on add new on the top and then click on upload theme and choose file and then find our theme. So themify ultra.zip over here, click on open and install. So sometimes when you're installing the theme, you may get an error saying the file has expired. So sometimes when that happens, you may need to contact your hosting provider to ask them to increase your upload limits because sometimes they may restrict you know, the file size, uh, the maximum file size that you can actually upload onto your WordPress website. So from here, we can click on activate to activate the theme. Okay, so the child theme is if you do want to edit the PHP functions and the template of the theme, um, then you'll need to generate a child theme. Generally for most people, you probably don't need that, only if you really wanna customize the theme because what's gonna happen is that if you don't have a child theme, then if you do edit the you know the theme template and things like that, it's going to override it every time you update the theme and it's gonna you know delete your settings and things like that. So for most people, you don't really need it. Um, you can generate it later if you do need that. So over here, we can uh, scroll down over here to skins and demos. So as you can see, we have the default one uh, selected. So here we can choose different skins. So for example, we can click on this skin over here and let's just say, we, uh, let's just close it, okay. Close this and save it. And if we go over here and visit site, so we uh, right click and open in a new tab. With the skin, it's basically gonna give us a specific look 
for our website. Okay, so you can change the skins uh, to any skin that you want. So skins and demos over here. And let's say, for example, you want to change it to this one. Uh, we can click on save and then we can refresh that and it's going to have a different look. Okay, so the font is different, the colors will be different, things like that. You can choose that, um, but we're going to start just with the default theme because I don't want any other stylings because sometimes it might confuse you uh, when you're changing like your fonts and stuff like that, but you can use that and you can also click it and you can also import the demos, but it's also going to import all the pages and it can get quite messy if you do import that. So what we're going to do first is select the default one and let's just make sure we save it and let's refresh the page like that. Okay, so that's the default theme and I'll show you guys how to customize and uh, work with Themify Ultra. So one of the things that you may want to do first is you may want to create your pages first. Okay, so we can click on the pages over here. Okay, so pages are like your about page, your contact page, services page, and things like that. You can create as many pages as you want. So let's click on add new. Uh, you may also want to delete these ones, which I'll show you in a second. So over here, add title. So I'm going to add a home page. So let's type in home over here for the title. Now we can click on the three dots over here on the top. Okay, top right and uh, deselect full screen mode. And basically it's going to bring back your sort of dashboard thing like that. I normally like to work with WordPress like that. So we can click on publish to publish that page. And you can also deselect this to basically, um, you know, so you don't have to publish it twice. So I might select that and click on publish. Okay. So from here, we can click on view page and that's going to, you know, show us the page that we just created and it's going to appear on the top over here. So we're going to go back over to our dashboard and we're going to go back to our pages section. I do want to delete the sample page. So click on pages. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two over here bulk actions, move to trash and apply. Okay. And then we can click on add new again and let's add in the other pages like your about page. So over here about click on publish. Let's click hover over here. You can also click on page as well. So click on page, not the builder page, just click on page. And then let's add a services page maybe. Services page and click on publish. And then what we're going to do is add another one. So page and add a contact page. Okay, so contact and then click on publish. So let's say, for example, if we view that page, and what you're going to notice is that it's going to show your website dot uh, com and then forward slash, you know, question mark page dot. Uh, ID 16 like that. What you do want to do is you want to edit your permalinks to basically display the page title or your post title in your URL. And this is good for search engine purposes, but it's also good for, you know, people when they look at your website URL in the search results, because sometimes it might have just a lot of numbers and that's not great. So let's go to dashboard over here. So let's go to settings. Okay, so we're going to go to the permalinks. Oops, let's click on permalinks over here. And then for the permalink settings, I want to change it to the post name one. Okay, so it's basically going to show the title or the post in the URL. And click on save changes. And then if we go and visit our website, let's click on one of the pages again, like home. Then it's going to show the title in here. Okay. So that is like the basic settings. Now, what I want to show you guys is how to ensure that this home page is actually just your your website.com. Okay, so you want to make sure this home page is uh, set in as your static home page. To do that, you can go to customize. So this customize section basically allows you to style your website, like change your colors and fonts for pretty much every section on your website. Okay, so they've also got basic and advanced options, which I'll show you later on. But what we're gonna do now is click on back, navigate to homepage settings, and select a static page. Okay, and we're gonna select our homepage uh, to be our homepage, right? So our homepage to be homepage, 
publish, and then close that. Okay, so now if we click on the home page, right, it's just gonna be ourdomain.com, right? So that's exactly what we want. So the next thing that we're gonna do is to create our menu navigation. So we wanna make sure that, you know, this is in order. So what we're gonna do is we can hover over here and then click on menus, or we can go back, you know, to our dashboard area and we can go to appearance and then click on menus like that as well. So we're gonna create a new menu name. So this one's gonna to be top navigation. So just gonna call it top nav. And here we're gonna select automatically add new pages here. Okay, so if you create a new page, it's also gonna appear in this menu. You can set that in or you, if you don't want to, then you don't have to. It's personal preference. So over here, display location, we want it to be main navigation and click on create menu. So over here on the left hand side, we can add in our pages. So if you only see like a few pages over here, you may want to click on view all and that's going to display all your pages. So I'm going to select about contact and services to display in our menu because for our home uh, page, generally when you click on like the logo, it's going to take you to the home page. So I don't think we really need that. So we can click on add to menu. Okay. So that's going to be added over there like that. And if we click on save, and let's open it in a new tab. So over here, we can see our navigation menu. So about contact and services, let's go back over here. You can click on the drop down over here like that. And then you can also create a mega menu. Basically you can sort of create like a drop down where you display uh, multiple menu items um, in different columns as well. So you can do that, which I'll show you maybe in another video. Um, you can also do something like this. So let's say for example, you have, you know, different pages under services. Let's say for example, this is like a different page and we can put that under services. So it's sort of like an indent. So what this is going to do, if we click on save and we can go back and refresh. So when people hover over services, it's sort of going to uh, drop down. Okay. Like that. So you can create a drop down menu just like that. So let's go back over here and let's rearrange it back like that and click on save menu. And then let's go back over here and refresh. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do is I'll show you how to configure the overall layouts of your pages as well as your header and footer design area. So you can navigate back to our dashboard and we can go to the themeify settings. So hover over themeify ultra like that, and then click on Themify settings. So with the Themify settings, this is basically where you can sort of edit the structure of your website, including changing your header design and your footer design, also like your page layouts, um, theme settings and everything like that. You can also go to, I think it was update over here and click on child theme to generate a child theme if you do need to. So you can go back over to settings. So I'm gonna go through um, just like the most important settings over here. So on the general tab over here, we can click on the fab icon and the fab icon is a little icon on your tab. So sometimes, you know, if your customers maybe have a ton of tabs open and it's probably a good idea to have your little logo on here so they know, you know, which site it is. So you can click on upload and you can um, create a fab icon, you know, using uh, Canva, or you can go to Fiverr and hire someone to create your logo and fab icon together. So I'm going to um, upload my fab icon. So I've created my fab icon to be 64 by 64 pixels. And it, normally it should be a PNG file, which is basically a transparent file. And let's click on open. And then it's going to upload our fab icon over here. So let's say we save it and let's just refresh our page like that. And then you should see the icon appear on the tab like that, right? So let's go back over here and with your header code and footer code, this is where if you have like a Facebook pixel, you or a tracking code, you may want to enter it over here. So this basically gives you easy access um, and you don't have to mess around with the theme settings, uh, the theme sort of uh, file and things like that. So click on the search settings and basically you can uh, configure it to display certain posts or pages or things like that. Let's go back over here and let's navigate to the home page. And this is our search thing. Okay. So you can set it to exclude certain categories or whatnot. 
So we can hover down over here to the error 404 page. This is where you can create a error 404 page. So if people search in a URL that doesn't exist, you can create a um, custom 404 page and then redirect people there. So you can click on Google fonts and you can also show all Google fonts. Sometimes it may take a little longer for your website to load, but you do get more options with the font selection. So with the maintenance mode, you can set the maintenance mode. So if, basically if you're creating a website, you may want to hide your website and like, you know, set up a coming soon page or something like that, um, you know, before you launch. So you can select that if you want to. Uh, for the Google Analytics, so you can paste in your Google Analytics code over here. Okay, so it's really, really easy and you just click on save. So we'll click on theme settings. So let's go over here to theme appearance. And this is where you can change your header design. So you got over a dozen different header designs. It really depends on you, but I really like this header top bar one. And here you can basically customize a lot of different things. So let's just go and save this first and I'll show you guys, you know, basically how I do it. So I just refresh it and, you know, see which one suits me the best. So we can go back over here and let's say if you're scrolling, so this is basically your sticky header, it sticks there. You can also um, disable that if you want to, you can disable the site logo uh, or the tagline as well. So let's say for example, this tagline, you don't want it, then we can disable it, right? You can also exclude the search form um, like this, so you can exclude this one. So let's just click on save and let's refresh that. And then those changes are made. So it's really, really simple. Um, you can play around with the different uh, display settings with the mobile menu style. This is basically for mobile devices. Let's say if you resize the website like this, you can also change the style it pops up in. So for example, this is just like a normal sort of slide out one. You can also change how that looks. So you can mobile mini style, you can change it however you like. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it as default. And you can also change the header widgets, how many widgets on the header section, as well as the footer design, how you want that to look. Um, so I'm gonna click on just this one over here, the header, the footer block, sorry. And let's just do, save that in and let's do a refresh. And you can see how that changes the footer section. So let's navigate over here again and you know, you can really configure it how you want. So maybe I might want to remove the logo and I want to remove this one as well. So let's go back over here and then let's uh, hide that logo. And then let's scroll down over here. So I want to hide this one. So this one is actually footer text uh, number two, this one. Okay, hide footer text number two, like that. And then we can click on save. Let's refresh that. And then that looks pretty good. So let's go back over here. And then we can scroll down. Okay, so you can customize the mega menu, which is like your uh, thumbnails, the size of the thumbnail. Sometimes you may need to edit that as well. Image filter, so you can also set an image filter on your images. Generally, I leave that as empty. You can also create a loading screen, animated background colors. Basically, you can enable that. For example, if we enable uh, this one into the footer, let's just click on save. So there's so many things that you can do. It's really up to you how you sort of want to design it. I just want to show you guys, you know, some of the different features. So generally, this is going to, you know, change colors like that, which is pretty cool as well if you do want to do that. But let's just disable that like that. And then you can also click on related post. So this is when you have your blog post, this is basically, you know, you can customize what it shows, right? Same thing with like the single post slider settings, pagination options. There's just a ton of different things. So I'm just gonna click save for now. And we can click on default layouts. So here, this is important. So if we go over here, this is our homepage. And for the default layout, we have a title and we also have a sidebar on the right hand side. Okay, so that's set by default. So what we wanna do is we wanna click on default page layout and for the page option, uh, sidebar option, we wanna to set to no sidebar. And then we also wanna hide the title on all the pages like that. And you also wanna probably disable the comments as well and then click on save. So we can head back over here and refresh 
And this is basically going to give us a blank canvas to work with once we turn on our builder to start building our website. So let's head back over here. And here we've got the portfolio settings. So if you want to add a portfolio, you can also install the portfolio post plugin. So I might just quickly install that, install that over there. And then here I'll click on install for the portfolio post. You also got the Themify updater, which is basically if you do have access to the Themify membership, you will get a license key, which you can add to the updater, uh, which I'll show you a little bit later towards the end of the video. And that's gonna give you access to the automatic updates. And then if you have the membership, you also get the forum support as well. So I'm just gonna quickly install those ones over here and apply. Okay, so we can head back to Themify Ultra and Themify Settings, scroll down so you can edit the portfolio uh, settings and how that looks like, your portfolios. For the image script, we're just gonna leave that as default. For your social links over here, what I do recommend is adding in your social links because once you add your profile URLs over here, you can display the social links anywhere on your website and it's automatically gonna link to your profiles. So let's go to Twitter and pretend that's my profile URL. Just copy that and paste the link into here. Okay, and you can also change the colors by clicking over here. I'm just gonna leave it as the default colors. Uh, Facebook, you can copy your profile URL and then paste it into here just like that. And let's just pretend that's my YouTube one. And let's say for example, you don't have Pinterest, you can also add the link over here or you can just type in Instagram. Uh, if you have an Instagram account, paste that in and then, so let's click on insert icon. And then uh, you can select on font awesome and you can try to search for the Instagram logo. So Insta, so that one does look like the old one. Um, okay, so let's just insert icon again. Let's click on the font awesome. Let's navigate to brand and let's just try and find it over here. I think they do have the new one. Okay, just over here like that. So just like that and then click on save. All right. So if you want to display like your social links, you can go to appearance over here. Let's click on widgets. And let's say we want to display it on the footer section over here. So we can click on widgets again. And then this one is, I think it's going to be the footer social widget over here. So we're going to click on plus and then we're going to scroll and we're going to look for the Themify social links click it and drag it, okay? Drag it to the footer social widget section and drop it, okay? And then over here, uh, we can select to open in a new tab, which I generally like to do because it's, you know, an external link. So I want to open in a new tab, click on update. And then we can refresh the page and your social link should appear like that, okay? So you can also display your social links uh, a little bit later when we turn on the builder as a widget anywhere on your website, which I will show you. So let's head back over here, Themify settings again. And then what we're gonna do is, basically you also have the integration API. So this is where if you have, you wanna insert the Google map uh, onto your website, you'll need to add the Google map key and you can generate the API key over here. Now, if you don't want the API key, there's another way of doing it, which I'll show you later as well. Um, if we click on the opt-in, then we can add in the API for like MailChimp or like GetResponse. And basically you can create a opt-in form easily on your website. So I do also have a specific video for that, which I basically show you how, how to do that as well as how to customize your you know, opt-in box and how to add it anywhere on your website. Uh, we've also got the Themify Builder. So you can also basically um, customize like the modules and things like that if you want to disable it um, and things like that. So we can go over here, the tools. Okay, so this is a find and replace tool. Sometimes you might need that. And we also got the hook content. So I'll show you that in another video. This is really, really useful if you want to have and show content on your website where you can't sort of turn on the builder on. Let's click on add item and I'll show you what I mean. So see hook locations. So you can add content anywhere on your website. So this is really useful. Sometimes you may want a, an announcement and you want to show it up here, then you can use the hook content. So let's just close that for now. 
uh, role access. Basically, you can create users over here and allow uh, people certain permissions on what they can and cannot update with the builder. You can also upload custom icon fonts as well. All right, so let's head back over here to our site. So right now I wanna show you guys how to add in your logo as well as show you how to style your website and where you can change the fonts. So you can click on the customize button on the top left. So customize. So this is gonna redirect you to the Themify options. So you can customize every single part of your website from the body of your website to the header section, which is the top, to the footer section on the bottom. You can also customize the sticky header, virtually any part of your website you can customize, including like the mobile menu. You can also customize your sidebar section uh, once you actually add in your blog post. You can also add in custom CSS. So if you can't customize it here, you can't change the color, then you can add some CSS code and that's gonna help you change. So that's something that you can get if you do have the Themify membership. So let's go ahead and change our logo first. So you can click on site logo and tagline, click on site logo. So if you don't have a logo yet, you can just simply enter in your site title for now. So for example, like logo, and you can change your font as well as the size, as well as change the color and styling for your font as well. So you can also click on logo image if you do have one, and you can click on plus to upload. Click on upload files, select files, and you can upload your logo from your website. So I already pre-created one, which is this one over here. So it should be a PNG file, which is transparent, because if it's not, sometimes if you change the color of your header, then it's gonna have like a white background. So I've also created a few other logos here, because I wanna show you guys um, how to adjust your header size uh, to fit your logo. So I'm gonna upload these three and open that. So for example, if I put in, let's say this logo over here, this is like a square logo. These ones are like horizontal ones. So if you put this in, so it's 1000 by 1000, insert image, it's gonna be quite large. You do need to restrict the size a little bit. So for example, like maybe let's try 100 times 100. Okay, so make sure to divide it by the same ratio. So for example, if it's uh, 1000 by 1000, let's say we divide uh, 10 on the width as well as the height. So 1000 divided by 10 is 100. Make sure to do the same for the height as well. So let's say for example, that's still a little bit too big because it makes the header quite large. So you may want to reduce that to maybe let's say 50, 54. And as you can see, if it's a 100 height, it's not going to be resized properly. So set that to the same one. So as you can see, it's quite small, but if you're okay with that, then you can also edit the margin of, for your menu links over here. So you can go to the main navigation, click on menu link, scroll down to the margin over here, and then click on deselect the apply to all margin. And for the margin top, you can add something like, let's say 15, so 15 pixels, or let's say, let's try 14 or maybe 13. So that's like in the middle. Okay, so if you're okay, okay with that, then that's fine and you can publish that and you're ready to go. But in some cases, you may need to readjust your logo size or the sort of the direction of your logo. For example, this one's like a square one. You may need to adjust it to something like this, like a horizontal logo where you have the image on the left and you have your text on the right. Or you can have this one over here. Maybe you have to delete the text over here and maybe just make it this image over here larger. Okay, so you can also design logos on Canva. It's also really good because I also use it for like thumbnails and other things as well. You can um, have a lot of different uh, elements that you can use. So if you have the pro version, you got a lot of different graphics that you can use, um, you know, for your designs as well. So you need to readjust it. Um, you can also readjust it like this. Okay, so we have the image on the left and you have your text on the right, or you could just, you know, delete that and just have the text like that, right? So you have to adjust it depending on your header size. So maybe for this one, it may be a better option to actually use this one over here, like the horizontal logo. So this one's 400 times 1000 in height. Insert image and let's just delete the restriction first. So let's try 
So 400, right? So let's just say 400, let's divide it by, so 400 by 100, let's divide it by two. Okay, so this could be maybe 200. And then this one could be divided by two, which is 50, all right? And then that's gonna fit a lot nicer, all right? So I'm gonna um, add in my logo from before. So this one, logo, and insert image, and I'm gonna resize this down. So this one is 512. So what I'm gonna do is 512 divided by four, so 128. And the height is actually 128. So what I'm gonna do is 128 divided by four. Okay, so it's gonna be 32 and that's gonna be resized properly. So then we can go back to the navigation menu and I'm just gonna delete the margin on top over here. Okay, and that's gonna be perfect. And then click on publish. So the other thing that we can do is adjust the header background. So we can go and minimize these ones first and minimize this as well as this. So here we can click on header and you can change the header background color and the header wrap section. So you can change it to any color that you want um, you have a ton of options over here, but generally I recommend keeping it like a neutral light color, which is like a white or a light gray or, you know, a darker color like that. So something like that is good, right? Because sometimes if you do change it to like an orange or like a red, like, you know, one of your colors um, that you've chosen, then sometimes it's going to be harder to match your hero image as well as the design for the rest of your website. So for example, if you go to like the Coca-Cola website, you have like a sort of white background for their header section, and then they use their main color, which is red throughout the website uh, in your buttons, as well as maybe the images as well. So that's how they sort of apply their color. And if you look at their footer, it's like a dark gray as well. So you can go to, you know, websites that you like, as well as your competitors websites and check it out and adjust the color. So for example, I'm just gonna keep this as, a white color, okay? And then we can minimize it. Here, we can go to the main navigation to edit the link colors over here. So for your menu link, right now it's a, like a dark gray. When you hover over that, that's gonna be your menu link hover. So for example, generally what you should do is probably choose your color palette before you start building. Um, that way you're gonna make sure everything's consistent. So one of the ways to choose colors is go to is to go to color.adobe.com and you can pick a color using this sort of color wheel and basically basically it's going to uh, look good on your website and try to use these colors sort of sparingly um, but I think one of the easiest ways to do it is to click on extract theme and then you can go to a website like uh, unsplash.com and try to find an image that you really like that really sets the mood for your brand so for example this one uh, looks quite nice so you may want to, you know, download that onto your computer and then save it. So I think I already saved it. So you can go back over here and then we can click on select file and then we can upload that image over here and open that. And it's going to take the colors from that image and then you can use that as your color palette and apply it onto your website. So I generally take these colors and also use uh, neutral colors like a sort of like a um, grays and like white color on your, on the website as well. Because sometimes if you don't know which color to use, it's good to use a neutral color. It just keeps things really simple and consistent. You can also, if you have, let's say your logo um, designed already and you have colors in your logo, you can take the same uh, logo image and you can upload it over here as well. And then basically you're gonna, you know, use the same color as your logo. So basically that's gonna you know, sort of match your website. So let's go over here and let's upload that. And then you can also select the color mood as well. So like muted or something like that. That looks okay. So we can take the color palette over here, for example, uh, this orange or maybe this red might be okay. So copy that, come back over here, go to the menu link hover, paste in the color code and then when you hover over that, then it's gonna be a nice orange, which is taken from this logo over here, okay? So you can also um, edit the menu active link. So this is when you, let's say if you click on the about page. So when you're on the about page, the active link color right now is a red. So we can adjust that to 
probably the same color that we're using here. So we can paste that color in. You can also click over here and add that color to your saved color palette over here. So you can reuse those colors anytime. So you don't have to keep on pasting the code. You can also select a menu active link hover. So when you hover over the active link. So what I like to do is paste in that code and I like to select like a darker shade of that same color. And then I'm gonna add that in as well. And basically when you hover over that, it gives a slight effect like that, okay? So with the highlight link, this is also a really useful feature where you can highlight a link in your header section. So basically what you could do is, let's say if you have like a booking page or if you have a free quote or something like that, you can create, let's create a new page. So let's create a new page first and I'll show you what I mean. So add a new page. And then for your title, let's just set in free quote and publish that page. And then we can head back to visit website. And then we have that page in our menu over here. So to highlight the link, we'll need to navigate back to our dashboard and our menu section. So you can click on menus. And then we can scroll down over here to the free quote page, click on the drop down, And then we can click on highlight this link. So click on save menu. And then if we head back over here, then it should have highlight, highlighted that like that. So you can go back to customize and you can edit the colors of the background as well as the link text. So we can go to the main navigation again over here and highlight link, and then we can edit the background color. So for example, let's say we change it to this orange over here, and then it's highlighted, okay? You can also change the color. So let's say for example, perhaps we may wanna change it to like a white color or something like that. It may look a little bit nicer. And as you can see, when you hover over that, um, it's, t it's turning into orange because that is the same color that we set for the menu link hover. So they don't actually have this setting in the customizer section. So what you need to do is click on custom CSS and we need to add a little bit of code. So this is some CSS that you can actually get, you know, if you do need from the theme five forum, like for example, if sometimes you may not be able to edit it here, you'll need just some code. So I'll actually include it in the description of this CSS. So you can actually copy it and then paste it in and edit the color yourself. So just copy that. And then let's head back over here. Okay, so we're just gonna paste it in a match style like that. And then what we're gonna do is you can edit the color over here. So you can edit the color code. So for example, uh, we may want to, to maybe hover as a dark gray or something like that. So we can change the color code to a dark gray, like a 222, okay. So when you hover that, it looks something like that. Okay, so you can edit the color code here. You can go to a website like zero to 255 and you know pick a color or you know use the color code from here as well. So once you've done that, then let's click on publish. And then, yeah, if you do need any more sort of uh, options, you can also click on the advanced options. Um, you can also edit the heading one fonts, which is basically gonna set in the heading fonts globally and also edit the body fonts and things like that, which uh, we can do a little bit later. So if we scroll down over here in the customizer, we can also edit the footer. So the footer background color is the footer wrap. Let's change it to maybe let's say like a dark gray, like a maybe let's try 222 again. And then here we might need to change the link color as well because it's not very visible. So that is gonna be your footer link colors. So let's just change that to white. And you can also edit the footer text color as well. Um, but I might leave it because I think that's quite nice and subtle. It's pretty good. So let's click on publish. And you can change a bunch of different things also like the back to top button. Um, you can also edit the, let's say for example, where is it? So if we go over here, we've got the sticky header. So the sticky header, you can edit that here, for example, um, you know, when you're scrolling down, the header sticks there and you can actually edit the color as well. So you can edit pretty much anywhere on your website. So let's just close that for now. And what I'm gonna show you now is how to actually use the builder to start building your website. 
So you can hover over here and click on the turn on builder or you can click over here. So you wanna make sure that you have actually set in your homepage to be your uh, homepage.com. So for example, you wanna make sure you set in your static page, which I've shown you earlier. Otherwise you won't be able to see the turn on builder. Okay, so let's just turn that on. So once you turn on the builder, then on the right hand side, you'll see your modules. So all these modules, you can click on it and you can drag it inside your website. So as you can see, when I'm hovering over here, there is a purple box as well as a orange box. So the purple one is gonna be your row and the orange one is gonna be your column. So as you can see, when I'm hovering over the gear icon on the row, then you can select how many columns you want for that row. So for example, if you want a column, two columns like that, then you can select it. And you can also readjust the width as well, just by clicking and dragging like that. And you can select, you know, whatever you like, for example, this one over here as well. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna be creating a hero image. So we're just gonna create just one column, okay? And over here with your modules, there are quite a lot of modules and you can also click on the top over here and you can move it and drag it. You can also move it to the left hand side. You can also have it floating like that. You can also minimize it, maximize it, close it. And if you wanna open it again, you can click on the plus on the left here, the green button, click on that and you can move it back. And you can also click on this little arrow over here, click on it and it minimizes, okay? So for the hero image, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a background image. So we're gonna hover over the row and then we're going to click on the styling button over here with the little paintbrush, click on that. And then here we're editing the row options. So we're gonna add a background image. So click on background. And then for the background type, you can select an image, a gradient, or even a video as well as a slider. So with a video, if you do wanna upload a video, then I recommend uploading a YouTube video. So upload your video to YouTube first and then paste in your video URL here, which I'll show you in a second. So let's say for example, we wanna upload an image. So if you have an image already, then great. If you don't have an image, you can also go to unsplash.com or something like Shutterstock or Adobe Stock to download some images. So for example, we're gonna select a landscape image so scrolling down, so try to find an image where you can easily lay your text on top of it and that it's still visible because sometimes some images, like for example, this one over here, it's not so great. You'll either have to put your text on the left or your right hand side. Uh, so this one I think is not too bad over here. So you can click on it. And then instead of just downloading it, click on the drop down and download the medium size one because if you download the original size, it's gonna be, the file size is gonna be too large and that means your website's gonna load slowly, especially if you have a lot of images on that page. So this one is pretty good. So about 19, 20 times about a thousand pixels in width. So anything around that size. So if you do have an image, then you should crop it. Okay, so you can use like Adobe or you can use something like photo.com. If you upload an image which is too small, then it's gonna be too blurry. Okay, so I'm gonna download that medium one and you can just download that to your computer. I've already downloaded that, so I'm just gonna click on cancel. So let's click back over here. And then here we can click on the plus button, upload files, select files. And then we're gonna upload that image. So I'm also gonna upload some other images that I have downloaded as well, which I'm gonna be using. So let's just upload all those at one time. So we're gonna select our image and then insert file URL. So from here for the background mode, I'm gonna select the full cover one. So it covers the full area. I also like the parallax scrolling as well as the zoom scrolling. So sometimes you may wanna use those as well. You can also arrange the position of that image. So let's just, for example, let's just scroll down first. What we wanna do is we want to make sure there's spacing in that image so that we can actually see it. So let's click on padding and then we're gonna deselect the unlink it. Okay, so we're gonna add some padding to the top. So for example, 15, and then we can change it to percentages like that. Same for the bottom. So keep it consistent, 15% as well. So over here, you can click on it and you can drag it up and down to increase or decrease it. So for example, move it up to 20. You can also edit it here as well. So when you hover over, you'll see this purple shade and you can just drag up and down like that. So maybe, we can change it to like 21 or like 21. 
okay? So you can edit it visually on the front end like that as well. So for example, you can use this one to sort of rearrange the position of that image like that, okay? So that is pretty cool. So maybe I wanna move it down like that, okay? Then the next thing that we wanna do is, let's say for example, if we save it and we close that, what you're gonna notice is there's gonna be some space on the top as well as left and right. So what we wanna do is we wanna set the column width to full width. So we can do that by clicking on edit page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down to the Themify custom panel for the content width, set this to full width. So it basically goes from left to right. And over here, anything that you edit in the Themify custom panel is gonna be editing that specific page only. So for example, when I showed you guys before, in the Themify settings, you could edit like the theme appearance, the header design, the footer design, and also the default page layouts. Here you can actually set in the specific layout for this specific page, okay? So if we click on the page appearance, you can also edit like the different header design for this specific page only. You may even have like a specific menu uh, which you can actually set in as well. So for example, page options, and you can set in a custom menu for your header as well, okay? So let's just click on update first, and then click on view page. Uh, you can also uh, click over top of, over here and click on visit page as well. So as you can see, the image is now stretched from left to right, and there's no spacing on the top as well. So let's just turn on the builder again, and let's drag in some text. So over here, what we're gonna do is drag in a text module, just drop it in here. And then we can edit the text on the right-hand side. So for example, Themify, oops, Ultra. And then we can highlight the text and set the text to heading one. So generally for each of your pages, you should only have one heading one font. So this is for search engine optimization purposes, basically to rank your website on Google. It's one of the on-page factors. So you can have as many heading two or heading three on your page as you want, but generally for each page, you should only have one heading one, okay? So over here, we can go to styling and what we could do, okay, so this thing hasn't disappeared yet. Let's just click on that. And then go back to styling. You can go to font. And then here you can change the font color like that. You can also align the text into the middle, the center. And if you wanna change the heading one font, you can click on this general button up here to heading, heading one font. And here you can change the font family. You can also change the color, the size as well. So for example, 64 pixels. And if you wanna make the text pop a little bit, you may wanna add in a little shadow as well. So for example, Let's do three, three, and maybe blur, maybe let's try five, or that might be a little bit too much, but let's just try that. So what we're gonna do is bring it down to the black and then turn down the opacity down to around 0 0.1, something like that. Okay, so as you can see, that makes the text pop out a little bit better. So here we can click on done and we can drop in another text module just below that and then we can have a subheadline. So besides editing your text on the right-hand side, you can also click into the module over here and you can edit it directly on that page like that. So we could type something like the, okay, so we can't actually see the text. So let's go to styling first, font. Let's change it to white so it's visible and change the font size to like 24. Okay, let's click it back over here and let's just edit that text, the world's most flexible and powerful WordPress theme, just like that. And what we could do is go to styling and then we can also align it into the center. So besides aligning it into the center here, you can also go to the row options and styling and then click on font and then align everything in that row into the center as well, all right? So basically that saves you time if you have a lot of modules inside and you just wanna align everything in the row to the center. So what we could also do is you can also change the font and that's going to edit the font inside as well, okay? 
So what we can do is click on the text module here and what we want to do is move that text module up a little bit to decrease that spacing between the headline and the subheadline. So we can click on the styling tab up here and then what we can do is here we have padding and we also have margin. So both of them do similar things. So with the padding, it actually adds space sort of between the text and the container. So as you can see, let's say we add 50 pixels in padding and we hover over here, then it's going to add the padding inside that container like that. But if we add margin, let's say 50 pixels margin, it's going to add the 50 pixels outside the container, outside the blue container like that, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure this is deleted, the padding over here. And instead of adding the margin, we're going to do a negative margin. So negative 15 pixels, and that's going to add the negative margin and move the text module up. Okay. So that looks okay now and we can click on save and then let's say for example we drag in a button just below that and here we can edit the button text so something like learn more or it could be like shop or free quote anything that you like and let's say you want to link it to another page you can paste in the URL over here so we're going to link it to the free quote page I'm just going to right click it and copy link address and then I'm just going to paste that in Okay, so I'm going to open it up in the same window because it's on my website. Generally, if it's like a link outside my website, I'll open it in a new tab. So here you can select the colors, but I normally like to edit the colors in styling, button link and background. So this way I can control the colors a little bit more. I can also add a gradient to that button, which is really, really cool. So for example, I'm going to use the same orange for the button. And then you can also set in the hover color. So when people hover over it, what color does it turn to? So I'm going to choose the darker shade of that orange. And we're also going to edit the link. So the link color is going to be white. Same with the link hover. It's going to be white as well. Okay. So let's just click on done. And then you have your button. So you can also click on that button. You can also change that button style. So click on button appearance. You can change the size. You can also change the shape of it. You can change it to a solid outline or maybe a transparent button. There's quite a lot of things that you can do with it. You can also set it to be a downloadable like that. So basically you can link it to, let's say a PDF or something like that. And people can download it onto their computer. So let's just click on save. And for example, if let's say, for example, you created your hero image and text, you can also click on the drop down here and you can save as revision. So let's say, for example, hero image done, save it. And then if you make a mistake later on, you can also click down here and load the revision from that specific time. So that's really, really cool. You can also undo. I'm not sure if I showed you this before, but let's say you move this thing up here or you make a mistake, you can undo and redo. You can also click on the preview. So with the preview, you don't have to exit out of the builder all the time. That takes time to load. And another really cool thing is that you can also zoom out and zoom in. So this is a really great feature of Themify where this allows you to zoom out and gives you a nice bird's eye view and you can easily edit the layout and drag things anywhere that you want. So for example, let's add a new sort of row. So you can click on the plus over here and let's say we want to have two columns like that. Let's just zoom in a little bit more to maybe 75%. And let's say for example, we want to drag in an image. Let's upload this image over here, insert file URL and let's click on done for now. Let's drop in a text module like that. And maybe this could be like one of your services or your products. So services one, set this one to heading two, and then we can click on enter. Let's just paste in some text. So I'm just going to paste in some Lauren Ipsum dummy text, copy that, come back over here, paste that in. All right. So I might add in maybe one more line. like that and then paste that in something like that. So what you can also do is 
we want to add a little bit of padding on top of that uh, section. So over here, when you hover over that, the purple sort of background will show, click on it and you can drag it. Let's say we have a padding of 75 pixels or something close to that. So you can edit it there. Um, if you want to get very exact, then you can change it here as well. And you can also add it to the bottom, 75. So make sure there's enough spacing so that allows your content to breathe. Um, you want to make sure that it's not like cluttered together. Okay. So you can also edit it like that. For example, if you want to move it closer, smaller like that. So for example, maybe something like that. And you can also hover over here, click on the gear icon and you can also align middle. So that's going to align the image as well as the text module to the middle. So it looks really, really even. So you can also duplicate modules as well. So let's say, for example, you want to duplicate that button, you can, and then you can drag it down here and you can, you know, add that button over here. Maybe let's just add, let's just delete that text. Okay. So have the button down there and then you can edit the link and you can also edit the color of that button as well. So for example, button link background, let's change it to, let's say this blue over here. Um, okay. So something like, let's see. Okay. So I think that's close enough, something like that. And then we can also edit the hover color. So what I'm going to do is click on this blue and let's just save that blue there. Hover, let's select that blue and make it a little bit, choose a darker shade of that blue, save it. And then that's good to go. Okay. So there are many ways of aligning your content. What I do recommend is looking at some websites that you like. Uh, one of the ways to do it is to just duplicate this section like this. Let's duplicate it twice. And what we can also do is we can hover over here, hover over the gear settings icon, and you can also click on right to left like that. Okay. So that basically makes it sort of even. So it's like one image on the left, one image on the right, and then on the left again. And then you can just click here and, you know, change your services like that. And you can also click on the image to update the images as well. Okay. You can also add in a video so you can delete that image and we can add in a video, just drop that in. And let's say we just drag in this video from before, copy that, and then we can just paste in that URL. Okay. And then here you can set it to start at a specific time and end at a specific time. There are a lot of options that you can do. So for example, sometimes I do like to add an overlay image because sometimes that YouTube thumbnail isn't very good. It doesn't look very, uh, sort of consistent with my website design. So I might add in my own image, something like this. Okay. So that looks really, really nice now. And then we could, there are a lot of things you can do really. Um, you can go to styling and you can edit everything that you need for each of these different modules. So let's just click on done for now. So this is just one way of editing a layout for your page. You can also do something like, let's say you want to create three columns. Um, we can move this over here like that. Maybe have that video like that. And then you can also do the same as well. So you could have, you know, one column here two second one and the third column, and then have something like that as well. So I'm just going to undo that. So you can also, let's just delete this one first. You can also go to blocks and you can use some pre-created blocks by Themify. So we can type in like FAQ and let's say you want to add an FAQ, something like this. You can drop it down below there and then you have an FAQ. So we can click on the accordion and you can edit the accordion title, which is over here edit the text. You can also set it to, to be open by default like that or close it by default. You can also scroll down over here and you can select the accordion layouts. There's a lot of things that you can do, for example, like changing the icon, uh, when it's closed or when it's open, for example, let's click on that. And that basically means that it's open now and you can change the icon here just by clicking here. And you can also click on styling 
and you can edit each of the individual things on that accordion as well. For example, the icon background color, let's say we want to use that same orange and you can add that in as well. So it's really, really cool. I might just set in the same one. Okay. Like that. And then that's looking great. So besides that, you can also save your, uh, sort of rows as well. So for example, let's say this hero image, we created it and we can hover over here and we can save it, right? So we can save it as a row. And basically what that is going to do is that if let's say you want to create your about page, you can use that same row without recreating it. So let's just do hero image and text, something like that, and then click on save. So that's going to be saved over here. And basically let's just click on save and I'll show you what I mean. So let's just close that. Let's navigate to the about page and we can turn on our builder. And then instead of recreating that whole entire section, click on saved and for your row, we can just sort of drop that in and then you're pretty much good to go. So the only thing that you need to edit is going to be the, basically the full width of that column. So you can click on save first and then you can click on back end. Okay. That's going to take you back to the Themify custom panel, or you can click on the edit page on the top as well. So here for the content width, we want to set to full width and update. So we can go back and view page. And then here we can, this is our about page. So we probably want to change the look of that. So for example, let's just say about our company and you can edit the text like that. So it's really, really simple and we can click on save. So let's head back to our homepage and I'll show you guys the video. If we add in a video for our video background. So let's click on turn on builder and let's just copy that video. So you can copy the video URL and I think the URL starts from there. So copy it from that one. Okay. Without the and AB, or you can just go to share and then you can copy the URL that way over here. Okay. So let's go over here and let's go back to the styling background. Instead of image, you can select video, just paste in that URL just like that. And generally I do disable the audio because you don't want that to be playing. So for the background image, uh, I would also set one in because sometimes on mobile, the video might not play and it needs a backup image for that as well. So if we click on save and we close that. All right. So that looks really, really nice now. Okay. So just a very, very simple layout. So the other thing that I want to show you is ensuring that your page is mobile responsive and everything is all good. So click on turn on builder. And what we can do is we can edit the layout specific for mobile devices. So over here, we're editing the desktop version. Let's click on the mobile version and we can see what it looks like on the mobile. So as you can see, this doesn't look very, very nice at all. Like it's too close together. So we can edit it specifically. So what we're able to do is instead of having it, let's say two columns like that, we may want to change it to just one column. So we can hover over here and we can just select one column like that. And then that's going to edit this layout specific for mobile. So let's add a little bit of padding. So above this, the text module like that. So maybe let's do like 25 pixels. That's looking okay. And you can also edit the bottom one over here as well. So same thing. So add a little bit of padding. 25 and then down here, do the same thing to this one like that. And then we can move that to 25 as well. So let's say for example, if we click back on the desktop, then it's going to change back to the normal layout. So you can do the same thing for a uh, tablet landscape mode or tablet portrait mode. Um, as well. I think it looks still looks okay like that. So only for the mobile one, you may want to edit that. So you can also do some visibility settings as well. So let's say for example, let's click on this desktop one. Let's say for example, you don't want to show the FAQ section or it could be some other section. You can hover over here and then you can hover over the three dots like that. 
visibility. And then basically you can set the visibility for your desktop, tablet landscape, tablet portrait, or mobile. So maybe on mobile devices, you don't wanna show this FAQ because sometimes you don't wanna to have too much content and you may wanna hide specific sections. So you can hide that, click on done, and then save it. Uh, we can try and click on mobile and see if it disappears. Okay, so it's not gonna disappear here yet. Maybe you can click on preview and see that, see if that disappears. Okay, so that is all good, right? So it's gone now. So you can edit that for the sort of specific rows or you can also edit that the visibility for a specific module as well. So you could also edit the visibility for a specific text module like that as well. Um, there's, it's really, really flexible and you can pretty much do anything that you want. So let's click on save. You also have the option to sort of import and export the layout. You can also save your entire layout as well, uh, duplicate the entire page, add some custom CSS. So there's quite a lot that you can do. Um, the other thing I want to show you guys is essentially how to add in your contact form and how to do some other things as well. So let's get to that. So before you can add a contact form, you'll need to add a plugin. So below this video, I'll also have a link to download the Themify contact form, but you can also use other contact forms as well. So you can go to plugins in your dashboard area and click on add new. So you can download the Themify uh, plugin onto your computer and then you can click on upload or you can search for contact forms here as well. For example, contact. And there are a lot of plugins for anything that you like. For example, if you want to add your Instagram feed or if you want to add like a booking system to your WordPress website, there are plugins for anything for your website. Just like for your phone, you know, you, there's tons of apps that you can install for dating or for gaming or productivity. Uh, plugins are essentially the same thing. So what we're going to be using is the Themify one. So we're not going to be using these ones, but you can. So I'll show you how to use it. So upload plugin, choose file and we're going to install the builder contact.zip and click on open install now now the reason why i like the builder contact by themify is that it's very easy to edit the style of it so let's just activate that plugin and what we could do is we can go back to visit site and we're going to go to our contact page and once you've actually installed and activated the plugin then once you turn on the builder the the contact module will be on the right hand side over here. So you can scroll down the add ons contact. So let's say, for example, we want to add two columns like that. So the contact form can be on the right hand side and you have your contact form. So here you can set in your recipients. So where do you want that message to be sent? So put in your email there. You can also customize some things like the success URL or success message. So for example, once they've submitted that message, you can redirect them or you could also give them a success message as well. Uh, you can also edit, for example, the form and the fields. For example, let's say you have this one over here. Um, you can also edit the layout of it as well like that, which is cool. Okay. And yeah, you can add uh, fields as well if you do need to uh, collect different information as well so you can customize everything here now if you want to edit the style of this contact form you can go to the styling and then you can go to the general tab click it and you can edit each of the different sections on here so for example you want to change the button color so you can click on that send button okay click on background and you can change that color to uh, the blue color or that orange color. It really depends on what you want. And you can also edit the hover color as well. Something like that. Okay. And that's pretty much it. So you can click on done and then you have your contact form there. So make sure to enter an email address and let's just click on save and done. Okay. I'm just going to put in my one for a second. So generally what I do recommend is putting in your domain email address. And I think that's going to help with the deliverability of your contact form messages to your email. Um, so there are some videos on YouTube, which shows you guys how to set up your SMTP. So the simple mail transfer protocol, and that basically allows 
the sort of uh, outbound messages to be sent out properly. Okay, so you may need to actually configure that. Uh, for example, set in your domain email as well as the SMTP. So there's some videos on that on YouTube. Um, because sometimes if people submit a message, it may actually show like a warning message um, when you actually receive it. So click on done for that. And if you want to add a map, you can add a map over here. So as I showed you before earlier, you'll need to get the maps API key, which you can click on and you can get that, but you do need to put in your sort of billing information on Google, like credit card details and things like that. Generally it's free because I think Google have a free tier. If uh, you don't want to do that, then you can also uh, try to figure out another way, which is if uh, you try to find your business on Google and then over here, you can click on share, click on embed and then copy the embed code and then come back over here. And here we can drag in, instead of the map module, we can try to drag in, I think the HTML one like this and then just paste that HTML in, okay? Click on done and then you can click on save. Let's just click on preview and see if that shows up. Okay, so that doesn't show up yet. Let's just save it and close it. And then hopefully our map will show up like that. So we can also turn on the builder and let's say for example, you wanna add an opt-in. So you may wanna collect emails on your website. You can add in your opt-in form like that, okay? And you'll need to put in your API key in the Themify settings, which I showed you earlier. So you can customize how it looks, uh, go to styling, and you can edit um, each of the different sections on how that looks. I also do have a video that shows you how to customize it and add it onto your website, as well as uh, copy over the API keys. And I'll link that video in the description below. But this is quite a useful feature because then you don't need to have any other coding uh, for your website. So, there is that and you can also add in like, let's say a widget. So add that widget in and because we put in our social links before, we can try and find our Themify social links widget like that and open link in a new tab. And over here, it will show your social links like that. So we can put that there or you can move it up over here. Also click over here and you can edit. This is gonna be the link. So you can also edit the link color to something like that and that's gonna edit that, okay? And then you can put in like a title on top and add in your address and build out your contact form page, right? So let's just click on save for now. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is how to add in your blog post. So if you wanna create like a blog on your website, you can do that really, really easily. So one of the things that I wanna do first is I wanna add a new page first and I wanna create like a blog page. So this is where we're gonna display our blog post. So with blog posts, you can create content and creating content is a great way to get organic traffic to your website because you have content and people search for that. And let's say for example, let's just do blog first and publish that. Okay, so now that we have a page, then we can create some posts over here. So you can click on posts and by default, they'll have the hello world one. So I'm just gonna trash that one over here and then I'm gonna add a new blog post. So here we can add in the title. So for example, we might create a blog post about how to make money on YouTube in 2022, something like that. And then here we can also add in our category. So set in our category, add a new category. This one might be about YouTube. Click on add new category. And then we could add some tags as well. So something like YouTube and comma, maybe passive income. Okay. And then also add in a featured image. So let's go and grab a image from Unsplash. So we could do, let's just type in YouTube, scroll down over here to the free images. Perhaps this one might be okay. So let's just click into that and then I'm gonna try to download the medium size one and I might crop it to be a little bit smaller because it is quite large for a blog post featured image. Click on save and let's go back over here, set in featured image, upload files, select files, and then upload this one over here and click on open. 
So you may want to resize it if it's a little bit too big. So over here, you can click on edit image as well. And let's just try to scale it down a little bit to 1200. Scale it down. And you want to try and keep the size of your blog post featured image the same for the other images as well. So let's just uh, click on back now. So as you can see, it has resized. Okay, and let's just set in the featured image for now. And here we can click on publish and we can view that post. Okay, so to add in content for your page, you can click on turn on builder like that. And you can add in content by using the modules as well. So let's say for example, you wanna add some text, drop the text module in, let's copy over some lorem ipsum text and you can paste that in okay and if you want to add you know sub headlines as well for example headline two then we can select that and it's just a normal word editor okay and you can also add in your images or anything like that you can also add in your opt-in form in there as well to collect emails um, from your email uh, for your uh, email newsletter for your blog. So we can click on save and I just want to show you guys how to actually display your blog post on your website. So let's just click on close. So now that we have our blog page, we can click on our blog page and to display your blog post, we can turn on the builder and we have a module that we can drop in, which is going to be the post module. Okay. So we can drop in the post module. And here we can also set in how that post module looks. So if you want it to be in a grid or do you want it to be something like just a list post like that? And you can edit the style there. There are a lot of different settings. For example, you can sort of uh, set the number of posts you want to show. You can also order by date. You can also edit the excerpt length, which is basically the summary length over here. There's a lot of things that you can play around with. You can also hide certain things as well. Like for example, this is the hide the author and you can hide that name there and you can also go back over here styling click on the general tab you can edit anything that you need like for example like the meta um, you can change the color as well as well as the font there's a lot of things that you can do so let's just remove that for now and let's say for example you want to have a sidebar so let's just click on done for now and for this sort of row we can do something like something like this okay so we have our post on the left hand side and here we can draw it drag in a widgetized module and then for the widgetized area we can show our sidebar widgets like that okay so to edit what is in your sidebar widget we can just close this for now and to edit that we can go back to our dashboard like hover over the top here and then click on widgets and then what you could do is you can edit uh, the things inside that widget. So let's say for example, the sidebar widget over here, you can click on the drop down, and depending on what you wanna show, um, you can add that in. So we could click over here and we could, uh, let's just say we wanna delete the recent post. So let's click on that one and we can remove that. Maybe this one over here remove that, remove this one as well. This is, let's just remove this one as well, remove search. So let's just say, for example, we can click on plus and we can add in, you know, our categories and we can click on plus again. And then we could add in maybe an image or you can click on browse all as well, right? And then you can drop in all or any of the widgets that you have on the left hand side over here right? So maybe you want to showcase the Themify social links. You can drag it and drop it below that. Open it in a new tab. You could also add in like the recent comments or like the featured posts. So for example, the Themify featured posts. And this one, you can also set in like show up to five posts or four posts. You can really edit uh, what you like. You can also edit the thumbnail size, which sometimes you do need to. So it's very important that you set the thumbnail size 
proportional to the blog post featured image that you added in earlier. So you can go to your media library, just open it in a new tab. And let's say for example here, right, we have to select display post thumbnail to actually display it. So you can um, disable it if you want to, but for the thumbnail size, if it's 50 by 50, that means it's gonna be a square, but the image that we uploaded before is more of like a rectangle. So what we can do is we can divide the size over here by 10 or something like that. So what we could do is let's say 1,200 divided by 10 and then 750 divided by 10. So then that would be 120 times about 75. Okay. And then you can, oops, click the wrong button. You can click on update over here and then we can navigate back to our blog page and you'll be able to see the thumbnail like that. Okay. So you can also turn on the build up and if you want to edit the colors on your sidebar section, you can click on widgetized and you can set the link color as well. Like for example, if you want it to be darker color, you can also adjust the size however you like. And then if you do want to edit sort of like the blog post, like for example, let's say we click into the blog post like that. Okay, and if you do want to edit like the font universally, then you can also go to the customize section as well and you can edit the post. So here, the post, so you can edit the post as well as editing the sidebar section over here as well. And you can also go to the advanced settings if you can't find the options as well. So we can close that. And then that's going to be your blog page. So you can also display your blog post anywhere on your website. So let's say for example, you want to add your blog post on your homepage, you can drop in a row and then you can look for the post module and you can just drop that in there like that. And then you can set in the display settings, the post layout, however you want. And then there you go. So this could be like your latest blog post and you can filter the categories or uh, you can show whichever category that you want or exclude it and you can set the layout as well as the styling in the styling tab area. So that is pretty much it for my Themify Ultra tutorial. So hopefully I can make another tutorial showing you guys more features of Themify Ultra and I'll link that down below as well. I do also have another video that shows you how to customize a custom footer section using Themify Ultra. And if you do want to update the theme, so for example, you want to update the theme. Sometimes it will show you guys a update message over here. You can go to my website, hoganchua.com forward slash update, and you can watch this video over here to learn how to update it manually. You can also get the Themify support as well as the membership, and you can use the discount code Hogan for 30% off. And basically that's going to give you access to the Themify Ultra theme, and you'll be able to get automatic updates. So for example, you'll be able to download the Themify updater plugin. So you can log into the area. So let's go to the member area and you can download the Themify updater plugin over here. And then you can go to your license keys and you can enter in your license key. Okay, so Themify updater, license key, enter in your license key and that's gonna give you access to the themes over here. So depending on which membership plan you get. So for example, I have the one which has all the themes and also all the plugins um, included as well. So you can actually view their membership and their pricing over here. It's very, very affordable, especially with the 30% off. Um, I personally have the Lifetime Club, but this one is a very, very good deal because you do get access to all the themes as well as some of the other plugins. So I probably will make another video about the Builder Pro. So this is sort of like a theme builder and you can really build the entire theme with this uh, plugin and you can customize a lot of the different sections as well using it. For example, customizing like the WooCommerce product pages as well. And Themify also have another flagship theme which is their Themify shop theme and I will make another video on that. So basically this is more mainly focused on e-commerce. 
So you can also install the WooCommerce plugin to add some e-commerce functionality um, on the Ultra theme, but the Themeify shop theme is more specific for an online store. So if you do have like maybe like you're selling a few products, then yes, you can use the Themeify Ultra um, to basically have your shop page as well. But if you have dozens of products, then I do recommend trying out the Themeify shop. And I'll link all those tutorials and everything that you need in the description below. If you have any questions, then drop it in the comment section below. Thank you guys and see you guys in my next tutorial.